the issue, I think, Dr. Drew, is that there is an inherent moralistic element, of oh, course, please. to addiction. What? So <laughs> moral is a moral problem I mean, in addiction? So, is there a moral problem in dementia? Well, is there a moral problem well, with that, schizophrenia? No, moralistic. Meaning that people moralize about it. Well, there's a moral element to it. Meaning, like when you made that comparison to if we don't get somebody treatment for cancer, for diabetes, like it's a huge problem. Well, people sometimes look at people who are addicted already with this sort of eye as, you know what, they're doing it to themselves. They're bad people. I mean, there's this judgment of them already. Right, which is exactly why we can't let that prevail right, anymore. We, the, we, the, we used to think cancer, and, right, we used to think people with cancer were possessed, and we shunned them too. But here's part of the problem with putting them in prison because there's already a coercive element, and we don't know if everybody in that type of treatment inside a prison system actually really has the proper education about this is a disease. So nobody on this panel is going to disagree that treatment for drug or alcohol addiction is a good thing. I think I want to delve a little bit more into where that can and should take place because there are people out there who have a lot of problems with this concept of putting addicts in jail for treatment. Joining us via Skype now is attorney with Prisoners Legal Services, Bonnie Tinner Yellow, and Hampton County Sheriff Nicholas Kochi, who has an involuntary addiction treatment program at the Hampton County Correctional Center. So I wanna start with you, Bonnie. Why do you believe it should be illegal to force people into prison-based addiction treatment programs? We are not taking a position on whether people should be forced into treatment. But when you send someone to to prison, you're, you're not helping their treatment. You know, we've talked to dozens of people who've been found themselves in prison at the lowest point in their lives very often. Couple of reactions. They're angry, they're pissed off. I didn't commit any kind of crime, I'm not charged with anything, why am I in prison? They're ashamed. And as I think any addiction specialist will tell you, Shame is a driver of addiction. Massachusetts is the only place that's made a choice to uh, increase reliance on prison uh, for, for, treat, for, for civil commitment, uh, while other states don't use prison at all. We need to put those resources in a healthcare setting where it belongs. And I, I wanna continue this discussion, and, and we'll come back to you in a minute, Bonnie. To play devil's advocate, we've actually had a few people on this show who say that, go, who said that going to prison, and in this case, it wasn't an involuntary commitment. Saves their life. They, yeah, they were oh, sent yeah, to prison listen. because they were found to be using Saves drugs. Saves their life. People, people have a moment of clarity around loss. Loss of life, near. Loss of freedom, loss of child. That's when addicts wake up and start to make change. So I wanna dig a little bit deeper into what a program might look like. And we all know treatment facilities can differ greatly in terms of how well they treat people yes, in the program the, and how the effective problem. they are. But that's I want to problem. ask you, Sheriff, just give us a little background on your program and how it looks in a prison. When you say the word prison, uh, I operate a county jail. And a prison and a jail are much different from each other. We've been in this business of rehabilitation for over 30 years. And if you really want to classify the institutions in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts being run by your county sheriffs, they're rehabilitation facilities. We have a 129 bed facility and it is full today. And we just brought in on Monday, a father and two kids, a family. We're treating a family that is dealing with a uh, severe level of addiction. Sheriff, we can I ask you something, sir? Can staff. I ask you something so you can clarify? You separate these individuals from those individuals who are deemed to be criminals, am I correct? Your Honor, that is correct. There is no intermingling whatsoever between somebody doing time that is incarcerated in what we call our clients on a civil commitment. What is the other option? The other option is death. Yep. Yep. We're it. putting people in the ground. That's it. When you talk about a section 35 civil commitment, the family has their hands in the air. Their hands are up. They don't know what else to do. Yeah. And we are an environment and we are an institution and we are a rehabilitation center that people can't walk out the back door and re-engage in the addiction behavior. And Your yep. Honor, I've begun to say that people that interfere with that are committing homicide. Because it is, it is, there's a material and direct relationship between preventing care and demise. And that's what we got in California. Of course, in here in California, we've, we're welcoming that and then we're letting them die in the streets. It's insane. And we have to do stuff like this. It's an emergency, it's a national crisis. <laughs> 